Hello everyone. It is September 29th, 2021, and this is the weekly Kubert meeting. Um, I'm your host, Chris Caligari. And meeting notes are posted out to chat. So if you could um, sign in and uh, sign in your attendance, um, that is tracked and we appreciate you uh, doing that. Okay. Um, let me share, and I will share my screen also. Okay. Um, we usually give a minute to for introductions. Um, go through the list and it looks like everybody here is tenured. So we can skip that section and get right into the agenda. Uh, Miguel, go ahead and start. Hello, can you guys hear me? I think so. Yes. Okay, cool, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to share with the community like uh, design documents I've been writing for the last week or something. It's about hot plugging and hot unplugging uh, network interfaces from running virtual machines. Um, it has kind of two parts. The, the first, it focuses a lot on, on Multis. And the second part uh, on Hubert and basically tries to define like how to use and the, the API. I've been already um, shopping this around uh, on the Multis team. I got some um, initial feedback from them. And the good news is they are quite okay with uh, with having like the, the required changes on Multis to have this happen. So I'm just trying to get initial feedback on the idea from you. And that is basically it. I've looked at the, I've looked at how we do uh, hot plug and hot unplug for uh, disks. And I've tried to kind of follow the, the same approach, like whatever the API it is that we have, I agree that we should uh, make it consistent across both disks and interfaces. So that's kind of uh, the overall idea here. And I'm not saying we should go over this right now, but I really appreciate some feedback on, on this thing for the next weeks. Yeah, I have it on my list to look at this. I'm sorry, I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, I mean, I, yeah, it's a lot of. I, I've undrafted this like yesterday, so I wasn't expecting anyone to just uh, jump that fast into it. But uh, ah, thank you. Okay. Excellent. I'm, I'm also happy to have a look. Uh, uh, what, just one thing did I understand you correctly that Maltus is, will support hot plugging an interface to the pod? Yeah, so the exactly. Yeah, I've shipped the oh, great. I've shot great. that idea around and they're they're yeah, they're welcome to it. Like uh the overall idea from like the let's say from a user of Multis perspective, it would be you, you just update the annotation on the on the network list annotation on the on the pod and it would auto unplug or auto unplug uh the interfaces that you add or remove. And they're okay with this approach. Yeah, sounds great. I mean, that's exactly what we would need also for disks where we don't have it. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sent out uh, that email last week regarding that customer interested in running Kubert on OpenShift dedicated. Uh, they were also very interested in and using Maltus with Kubert. So this is perfect timing. Okay, uh, thank you, Miguel. Um, anything else on the agenda? 
I, I haven't put it, but I was wanting to talk about all things open. Yes, let's do it. Yeah, so um, as it's coming up, uh, I actually took the few weeks off to be able to prepare for it kind of thoroughly. Um, but there is a just kind of a reminder from last week, there's a spreadsheet open, um, ready to accept ciders and people to go in and join this kind of multi-site cluster. Uh, I have testing done that replicates uh, site to site. Uh, so you can do cross joining. Um, and it looks like the only response I got in the super thread was, and I'll, I'll add it to the channel again or something, was from uh, Kevin and he was having trouble with the CM4. Uh, I just posted a response that saying you could probably just you know, use a USB since he was worried about the small amount of storage he has with his flash CM4. Um, but regardless, uh, if we can get more people to join, um, the sooner we can get some testing done, the more bugs we can find sooner, as I'm sure there's going to be, you know, some various amount of things that we have to handle. Um, but uh, if anyone wants to participate, message me on Slack or message the super thread, uh, we can get things started. We have Stu with us today. Stu, are you out there? Does not look like it. Okay, Sam, I'm I'm, I'm for sure going to uh, be helping you with this starting like after this meeting. <laughs> awesome. All right. Sounds good to me. And uh, if anybody else wants to participate, um, it's this is our uh, All Things Open uh, live demo. Uh, we will be speaking. Um, it's probably going to be a, a virtual uh, conference. Uh, they've been flip-flopping back and forth between having it be in person versus virtual. But pretty sure that they're they're finalized on uh, virtual presentation and, and attendance. So it, uh, we won't have to travel across the country. Um, and then that should make running the demo easier since like our, our physical machines can be right next to us. And um, so, yeah, if uh, you want to participate, um, find this uh, the super thread in, in Slack and, uh, and join us. Okay, anything else for the agenda? All right, um, let's move on to David talking about PVCs. Go ahead, David. Hey, so I kind of have a, a larger initiative here and that's that I want to, um, I want to make virtual machines more usable. And I want to make uh, it more apparent when problems occur. And I want to get earlier user feedback so they can kind of determine why their virtual machine, for example, hasn't started. And I have a centralized way of kind of figuring out why, like on the, the virtual machine object or coming back to this events or um, the earlier we can give this feedback, the better as well. So maybe there's some things we can do even when they post updates to a virtual machine or post uh, the virtual machine for the first time. So one of like, I'm just kind of narrowly looking down at one of the problems we have is that uh, somebody can post a virtual machine today with a clone source, um, a PVC clone source. And uh, if that PVC clone source does not exist, we uh, will we'll accept the virtual machine that's consistent with the Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, but the virtual machine can't start until that clone source uh, is created. Um, so I wanted to kind of go through the thought experiment of if it would make sense for us to begin sending back warnings to a user at creation or update time uh, in our validation hook uh, to tell them, hey, you know, you, you've posted this virtual machine, uh, has a clone source that, that doesn't exist. So the virtual machine is not going to be able to start until this PVC exists. Um, should we be providing feedback like that? Uh, so we'll still accept the virtual machine uh, update or uh, creation, but should we be providing feedback of warnings and things like that um, to the user at creation and update time, or would that be confusing? I'm, I'm trying to 
get some thoughts there. I think we would want that. Um, a lot of times this, there's not gonna be hands behind these, uh, these processes, right? It's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be automation tools like Ansible or something else. But it, who knows? And, that's possible. Yeah, like I would, I would want as I would want to be as verbose as possible, so that um, loggings can either be viewed manually with human eyes or sent out to some kind of log uh, analyzer and scraped. What What I'm mostly concerned about here is that that the warnings are kind of unclear and can be triggered in situations where they're not appropriate if we yes. want to make them efficient like even if i would create the this the, the the source pvc and the target pvc in the right order it does not mean that the that the watcher already shows me the source pvc for the validation web hook so we would really have uh, to query maybe uh, yeah Let, let's explore that for a second. Yeah. So you're yeah. saying that the uh, user posts a virtual machine and the source PVC at the exact same, or like a really close well, I mean, it's one, it's, it's one file and, uh, and and you have a YAML where you first have the source PVC and below that you have the target PVC. And if you post, if you post them with one kubectl apply, you will very likely see an error because the watcher did not catch up yet. If you do it with watch us, for instance. A, a warning. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, would, well, in this case, warning. a warning. So you would still get your uh, yeah, your yeah, screen. you. I understand that. I mean, you can still do everything, and everything is fine. Um, it, this is, but this is one thing which can happen. The other thing is that in general, we depend on the order then of operations, which is kind of weird a little bit. Think and, about yeah. the error message and what it's saying. It's saying this PVC that can't, this virtual machine can't start until the PVC exists. So I guess if, um, so you're saying if we have a file, it has the source PVC in it, it has the virtual machine in it, we post it, we're going to see that error that says yeah. that the virtual machine, okay. So then the user would see that error and wonder what's going on and they would investigate and waste their time because everything's fine. For instance, also it's kind of, um, you, you you can also end up in situations in automate in automation where you will always see the warning then, and uh, you have to ignore it. Um, so, but, but what what's definitely fine from my perspective and does not have these consequences is if you have, for instance, events which say then yeah delaying the start because the search PVC is not there or not created. Right. I mean that's fine that there are events they are known to be asynchronous, and. What you're saying makes total sense to me. Uh, and that's the same sort of train of thought that I've gone down until I think about how virtual machines are actually used. And if I think about the common use case, it's not posting a source PVC that we're then going to clone for our virtual machine right away. It's that a source PVC and, and like a pre-populated image exists somewhere and we're creating a virtual machine that's referencing that as our boot source. So it's, it's typically not, I would say that the use case you're saying is probably like a 10% use case versus a 9% use case would be. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I mean, you can probably come up with use cases where you think it may be handy to get the warning, but I'm not sure if we should even bring us into that trouble considering if that you will immediately see the warning event anyway. So, uh, and this is something which yeah, what I'm always struggling with. For me, it's always like in Kubernetes, you just have to look at your desired states and your warnings or in your events. I mean, that's just what's telling you what's happening. And the rest is not telling you what is happening. And I mean, we can probably create an insufficient list of extra cases where we do additional warnings, but it still does not uh, free you from the requirement to check events, for instance. That's that's my main concern. Also, like UIs in the Shift UI, for instance, you would immediately see you create the you create the VM, and uh, you would then immediately see an event a warning associated to the object directly on your web UI. So, from the web UI perspective, I don't think that for users it would even make a difference if you get the warning there or not. Um, 
I yeah. see what you're getting at. So is it sufficient to... Um, I th yeah, but just one more last thing. One last thing. Yeah. I really yeah. think that we are really bad. In oh, shoot. I think Did we lost you? his microphone. Lost you, Roman. Okay, ah, okay. Really can you hear me again? We yeah, lost yeah. everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my, 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 yeah, some weird fiddler 34 back with my microphone. It just turns down the volume. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, one last thing I wanted to say is that I think that we are definitely bad in Qubit right now regarding to creating always events in the right moments and to updating the status of VMs and VMIs properly always with the most needed information. That's definitely something that we should improve. But I really think that these are the better patterns. And for many users, it would not even make a difference if it's warning. From a warning, I would really more expect things like, hey, you're using a deprecated API, or this spec contains deprecated features. Please update this. Right? Something like this. Hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with Roman. And then there are other, I mean, just for this specific case, too. Um, you know, they may be referencing a PVC in a namespace that doesn't exist, so that's another thing. It would a uh, parameter of the warning or something. And also, they may not even have permission to clone from that, like, PVC in a different namespace. So there are a lot of, you know, that if we wanted so, to have, so you mean to create warnings, a, you'd have to have a lot of information. You'd have the webhook would have to do a lot, and I think it's better to stick with events. How would we get? Uh, information that the user doesn't have permission, for example, to clone. Is that something that exists in Qvert or is that something that exists in CDI? Um, no, so Qvert, Qvert actually does some checking too. Um, yeah, actually I think we do reject it now if they don't have um, permission to do it. Um, oh, but that's, that that that's an error. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, that yeah. should be in the validation webhook. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we okay. do that, but I was just thinking of other cases where these validations could just be more complicated. Okay, so we um, we have warning events we can send. Uh, we also have conditions, um, and where do we separate the two? Like, where what belongs as a warning? What uh, belongs as a condition? Um, how, how does yeah, it and we, we have, yeah. yeah, and we have the printable status, which uh, we implemented, I think. Yes. Also. Um, and yeah, the, the printable status, I think, is very important, important when you're on kubectl, for instance. And uh, yeah, the events, of course, for kubectl describe. Uh, regarding to conditions, I think most of our objects have one catch all condition like sync error or something where we can just put in, yeah, there is something wrong and because of that, it doesn't progress. I don't think that we need hundreds of different conditions for different things, but yeah. Yeah, but this isn't necessarily a sync error. Uh, so somebody could, um, well, let's say, for, for example, on this warning, uh, if we want to give feedback to the user that the PVC doesn't exist and the virtual machine is not able to start, I, yeah, I, we would still post the data volume and everything. We would just be waiting on the data volume to complete, and it's not really an error. It's just yeah. waiting. Yeah, yeah, I guess the, the, the yeah, I guess the printable status would be important here, and uh, I'm not sure if we need it reflected on the status even. Well, the printable status would just say provisioning. It still wouldn't give any condition to why, yeah. any sort of information to why we're stuck in provision. Like we, we wouldn't okay, get any so, information. So, so okay, so it's easy to get the warnings. Definitely. And then, yeah, and then it gets tricky. <laughs> so we can send a warning event when this occurs and say, hey, yeah. we've created, that, that's fine. Um, but then we're saying that there's three places a user looks. They look at, at their, their events, they look at the error condition, and they look at this printable status to get a high level overview of where in the launch flow they're, they're at. Can we so, remove? But, but I mean, like, I mean how can yeah. we? I've also, I mean, like also, like the pod doesn't have a lot of sub conditions, but I, I don't know. There is one condition which just says pod not ready or something, and then you have different reasons for that, like still pulling, creating initial sandboxes or creating sandboxes field or whatever. There's all kind of things there which are not necessarily bad, but just what's going on because it's just saying why it's not progressing. I guess 
yeah, just having a location like this. Maybe we even have it right now. I don't have all the places in mind right now to have. Okay, so that would be a, a new condition that would indicate maybe a new one or an existing one which I'm not aware of right now. Yeah. What What about progressing uh, something like? I don't know. That would make a lot of sense. Progress. I don't know. Progress. Yeah, something like this. Progressing false, and then the reason why, for instance. Or... Okay. Yeah, that that can make sense. Or, uh, or so... outstanding work. True and reason why. I, 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 I kind of like works. the progressing one because that, that's yeah. close to where the operators work. So let's say uh, a virtual machine progressing is false, uh, but you uh, have declared that you want it to be running. And the reason would be source PVC doesn't exist. Or let's say you've declared a virtual machine is supposed to be running and it is running, then the condition would say progressing is false because we satisfied that state. But, but I would also explain is to show the mo the right now most interesting thing. Like, I would not expect that it just says progressing while we're waiting for a PVC to be created or cloned. I, I would I would expect it to say when, for instance, the a, a reference PVC does not exist, and I think we just edit this. Then it will tell you uh, waiting for PVC whatever, and if uh, if uh, to be created, and if. Uh, this, the clone target is there. I would expect that it kind of tells me waiting for the clone PVC to be created. I mean, it would compete. That it's just one field, so there is always a competition going on of what is the most of what we interpret as the most blocking or and most interesting thing. But I still think it makes sense to expose these details there. Mm. Would it be a provisioning? condition something that's leading up to a virtual machine running i don't know that's not a catch-all though because we need yeah mm. i mean the progressing condition is great i think the, the main issue there is just that it's not necessarily as verbose for users as like we want it to be with the print table status one i just wanted to make the point that i still think that the print table one has the advantage that it can really just show, show the user what's the most interesting thing right now, no matter if this make, is technically interesting or not. Yeah, it just lacks the fidelity to give any real. So if we had a printable status with a reason, then uh, that would satisfy this. So if we did that, then we're coming up with new, um, it's not a condition, it's not a warning event, it's, a, it's something completely new. It's not a condition, yeah. I guess. So, uh, I mean, yeah, having both this, I guess, makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it's probably independent of the question if we want to return warnings with the webhook or not, because we always, because it's just an area where we're not good enough, I think. I'm still not convinced this helps the user experience much uh, because who's looking at like conditions and yeah, so so I think really for the it depends. So I think we have two types of users. We users or, or a mixture or you are a mixture of both. We have users which are using, really using UIs and we have really users which use which use kubectl. And I think the main thing is that what I would expect and what I, what I think we're still not good enough, but where we're going in the right direction is with the printable status, where, where like when I use kubectl for ports, deployments, whatever, it tells me in the status column something where, where I can roughly interpret if things are fine or not. And this is really something which I think we're missing. Okay. But, but maybe... Because I'm not sure what the warning, I, I, I would basically just expect to permanently see the most accurate warning when it to kubectl get my VMI or or my get my VM. Where? In the in the status in the status column of the object. Like I get it for uh for pods where it tells me image pull back off or where it tells me pulling image or something like this. I see. Okay, so we would have a status field that, um, man, how would we aggregate? Okay. But I think we have that already. Isn't it the printable status? It's it's a printable status. It's just going to give us one word starting. Yeah, uh, but this, 
Obviously. Yeah, but this is kind of what I would expect. It's like I would want. I think this is what we. I mean, maybe we want to add it. We want a reason then, so we're adding a new field. Yeah, but you would. Yeah, but then you see. Okay, this printable status indicates that something is wrong, and then it would do a describe on the object, and then there's the warning events, which give me the details. That would be the flow. I mean, that's what normally you do on Kubernetes all the time. You see something in the status is not right. You do kubectl get my objects. Then you get this overview with the status where it tells you, oh, this is not really right. And then do you, you do a kubectl describe on the object. Then you get all the details with warning events and everything. Maybe, or, or maybe I mean, I we're, we're not being consistent with what goes in the warning events and what's actually reflected in the status. So you wouldn't look at the status and necessarily see some of these things that we're talking about reflected. You would only Yeah, but that's it, that is where I think I, I also think we are not always creating warning events where we should. I mean, but that is would I guess um, it's sorry. like that like it like identifying the the warning on the API level this work just has to be done somewhere, I think. It's just um, a matter of where we do. It. Yeah, Sam? Yeah, so there's this field um, in the VMI called status.conditions. And it's, you know, you can use it for like, if a VM is paused, for example, maybe it would go there. I'm just, I'm just looking over, I was looking over, you know, how, you know, Rook does it with RBD cloning. And it means it updates the status object of the PVC, which in this case, you know, the keyword wouldn't really have control over because it would just go over the pending down scenario of the volume. But I guess the most appropriate area for which we would probably satisfy conditions i could be wrong um but it sounds like you're kind of wanting to replicate what's done like you know uh, OpenStack or aws for example where you have this state where you're cloning an iso um onto a block device and it's in that kind of uh cloning phase i guess it would be is that right yeah so the printable status on the virtual machine gives us kind of a high level um something similar to what you described. It just doesn't give us anything other than a one word string today. Uh, so we wouldn't get like a reason for why it's waiting in this state or anything like that. But yeah, that is what we're, at least what, what I'm shooting yes, for. What about status uh, dot mess? Like if you have, if you reference status dot conditions dot message uh, and you have like a pause, for example, it will give you a message saying VMI was paused by user as like the short string of a message. If, if, you've asked, if he's asking for more, like I, I'm kind of seeing the use case, but I'm kind of not like I'm in between, but I'm just trying to figure out where it would fit in to help out. Yeah. So we can, um, for example, in the um, when we're registering our CRD, we can say we want printable status, and we can say what fields we want, and one of those could be a condition, and we could actually print the reason or information in a condition uh, when somebody does like keep control get VMI in the name of the VMI. Yeah, we could, for instance, if someone writes dash o wide, then we could just edit. We could add more information there. The thing is, we don't have a consistent condition that gives us information about. Uh, all of this. That's kind of the problem I'm seeing. Uh, okay. So there's one condition that tells us if like an error occurred during the reconciliation of the virtual machine, but that might not always give us the broad category of everything that we need. So there's sometimes yeah. there's errors don't occur, but what? we know we're waiting on something. So 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 one so one condition where you basically potentially update the condition when you return without an error from the controller loop may catch all the interesting parts there. I don't know. So we would be returning a new, this is kind of going into the code, and instead of returning like that one error that trickles all the way down to where we actually execute the reconcile, we'd also be returning a message and that would be something new. Is yeah. that what you're kind of getting at? Kind of, I mean, it would be updated in the status, of course, but it would be like, okay, the reconcile loop detects nothing needs to be done right now because of we are in sync because we're waiting for something and this can then be printed, something like this. Maybe we just need another object that aggregates all the errors. 
like all, all the errors from the all associated objects of the VMI. So, so like cause, like the causes work on the validation. Yeah, I mean everything like PVCs, um, even um, yeah, I, I don't know everything that is related anyhow in any way to a VMI and that didn't work well, just go to. The I kind of like that idea of a co like the equivalent of the causes. So it's a list of things uh, that we want to report back to the user when we do a reconcile. That's interesting. It might not always even be anything. Most of the time, it's not going to be anything. But it gives us the uh, ability to send it back multiple things. So it might not just be one thing. It could be multiple things. And we essentially just override it on every, if it changes on every reconcile loop. Yeah. Maybe. That sounds cool. I think that's how Metal B does it with a few things. So it would be essentially we'd have printable status and then we would have something like um, uh, printable status reasons or and that's a terrible name, but something along those lines where it would be a list of reasons for the status being where it is. Yeah, sounds at least worth exploring. Hmm. Okay. I think I'll um, I think I'll run with that a little bit. We'll see where that goes. That's a that's a cool idea. Okay, thanks for the discussion. I know that took a long time. This has been kind of a frustrating topic for a while, so I wanted to spend a little bit of time on it. Yeah, all good, David. Uh, that's why we have this meeting. Um, so thanks for that. Um, and that takes us to the end of the open floor. If anybody has anything else. About a, a minute for someone to, for people to think of what they want to talk about. No one has anything that they would like to bring to the meeting? Anything else, I mean? Okay. Uh, any poll requests that uh, you have pending and you would like to talk about? All right. More poll requests. Let's. Uh, just take a quick look at the mailing list to make sure all conversations are handled. Uh, okay. Uh, Kyle has a question about CentOS based images. I think DDI. we have that. I think we have that conversation two times on the list, and on the other one, it was answered. Oh, did he create an issue on this? No, I think there was a second email to keep it oh, the same content, and yeah, the one above sent Oh, yeah. All right. Yep. Okay. So, did he get answered? Okay. Okay, very good. And that takes us to last week. Okay, all good in the mailing list. One of these days I'm gonna get a, a section here for Slack questions. <laughs> Just not today. Uh, Bug Scrub, who is not using Fedora 34 and can share their screen and run Bug Scrub. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> i think i i did it last time and it, and it was it went pretty good okay bug scrub time here we go <laughs> 64 73 does that look like a good one uh 
to look at. I, uh, go and click on it. I created it. Um, let's see what the response okay. has done. I signed it to Lubo, but I don't know if he's looked at it. <laughs> it has to do with our non root um, test lanes are not okay. No more information. Oh, we're, okay. we're good. We can. Okay. Um, yeah. Can I? Oh, you know what? I I can't label this. I'm not an owner in uh, Kubert, so you have to do the labeling. Sure. Thank you. Are we uh, triage accepting that? Yep. I am doing that right now. Done. Thank you. USB redirection not available. Or do we want to? We just want to look at unlabeled uh, issues, correct? uh ones that haven't been looked at yeah so if we have a okay so somebody says kind bug i i don't know if that well let's see what this is oh, oh the the comment wasn't removed before the kind if it's not marked as bug oh sorry what was that roman oh just I see it multiple, very often that people are keeping the kind back, but they're not removing the comment before it, and so it's get it doesn't oh, label. So the issue. should I skip one then? Yeah. Do we want to look at this one first? No, no, it's fine. Uh, okay. It was just an administrative comment. No, don't worry. Okay. Our automation, it's yeah. Our automation's not looking for that okay. slash uh, when there's a like a. I don't even know what that character is called in front of it, the comment character. Okay. So for the USB redirect one, um, I think Victor Torso would be happy to have a look here and help out. And you can you can probably write slash kind back there. Okay. Oh Oops. no, with the space. Okay. Do we need more information or anything? Do you want to set it's, a triage? It, it's not entirely clear to me what's the issue is here. It seems to be related to a disk, but it was a USB. Yeah, let's see if Victor can make something out of this. Then. That one is that one's being handled. And that one's being handled. Image upload timed out waiting for condition. Uh, I think I already see the issue there. This is probably copied again from an outdated post. I think mm -hmm. his issue is the access mode read write once. Command line, it should be read write many. But okay. uh, I think. But it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be. Why? It can be read write once. I think the issue is that then we create. 
we had this issue hundred of times because of this blog post and some some I don't know the details from the CDI and with cattle perspective anymore. But wait a minute, is this this is coming from a blog post? I don't Did know. I we, we have this blog post. We have <laughs> I don't remember which blog post it was, but oh, it's no. something very yeah about starting Windows and importing the Windows image with CDI. And there is this root cattle upload, and this part causes the issue. I didn't see anything should... that would, that should work. Read write once should work. Yeah, it's weird, and it shows the pod is running, uh, although okay, it's a timed out waiting for the pod to be ready. So yeah, this is a, a weird one. This looks like a bug. Okay. But I think there was an issue with that, right? That the, the, the target PVC was mounted two times or so, and then uh, something mm. like this. But yeah, anyway, if if someone from CDI can take a look, it would be great. Yeah, you can tag me. Right. I'm sure. I'm sorry, I don't recognize your voice. Uh, I'm Henrix. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> No C, R I K S. Yep. And so it, yeah, it always auto fills. Huh. M H E N R I K S. Yeah, there we go. Maybe your uh, GitHub account got deleted. <laughs> Weird. Oh, uh, you're a member of the of the org, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. Weird. And to take you quite ah, there you are. There you are. <laughs> and also, if uh, if there's any related blog that this is coming from, let me know, and and uh, we can revalidate that blog. I'm pretty guess, sure I know where this is what blog post this is referring to. <laughs> I don't know who Roman, was I'm meeting I think, you on that in, in Slack. I think, I think Alexander Wells may remember the details. I think he got pulled in a few times into the discussion regarding okay. to this issue. Yeah, I, I think you may be thinking, um, Roman, there was a while ago there was someone using like a read only many or something like that. Ah, uh, was it read only? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, I don't know. Yeah. But it was used all the way. Windows VM gets a 169 address. So no IP from DHCP. Um, one thing about this bug, there was um, another Ooh. very similar bug that got uh, kind of fixed, I think, like the fix got merged yesterday. And we probably, yeah, leave, leave it there. Like we probably want to cherry pick that, um, uh that pull request i mentioned there the 64 65 to the release if this is the the same issue i really think it is but how many Kind of like basically what was happening. <laughs> Roman, you're, you, we can barely hear you. Uh, you hold right. very, very still. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wiggle that cord at all. Uh, how, uh, what kinds of functionality does it exactly, uh, uh, what is it fixing exactly? How many VMs would be affected by this? Is it Windows VMs only or? Oh uh, no! It affects pretty much all the VMs, but uh, like the fix just enforces uh, that the 
DHCP v4 server replies with a with IPv4 addresses. Like so, before that, it was replying with IPv4 addresses in IPv6 format. Okay, so what functionality is impacted by this then? In the VMs, uh, what can they not do okay, then? Or is bridge, not? Okay, I see, I see, I see. Bridge, um, everything bri with bridge interfaces. Okay. With yeah. bridge binding, not with masquerade, only with bridge. Okay. I guess, yeah, makes sense to put it just, to Yeah, we can just wait to see if this actually fixes this guy's issue. And if so, well, we can reconsider backporting it or not. Yeah, I guess it makes sense to backport it to 43, 44, and 45 in general. But uh, yeah, we don't have a clear release policy there. <laughs> yeah. I meant to do in a release. <laughs> David, we should probably really resolve that at some point. What, did I hear my name? What'd you say? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it, this is a candidate to be backported to 45, 44, and 43, but we have no clear minor release uh, policies yet. So once we have to backport it, there is, still needs to be a maintainer who volunteers to the, do the actual release because we have no clear policy on when it happens and if and how to do it. Yep. Um, and we should really probably solve that soon. <laughs> we should. Uh, it's probably going to be coming in the incubation phase of the right. project. We will be tackling that soon. It's a little bit more complicated than even that, because I think we need to revise our release cadence and our policy around how long we support releases. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to be a lot more consistent. Yeah. Okay. Soon. So my apologies for even opening this one up. Uh, <laughs> being worked on. <laughs> Let's go all the way down here to create more than three VMs at a time. Creating more than three VMs at a time. One gets stuck at scheduled status with error. Hmm. I don't know, David, this looks like one of your PVC uh, status <laughs> messages. Yeah. Well, if the VMI doesn't exist, I mean, if the uh, image doesn't exist, it makes sense. You can't. Oh, yeah, you can't migrate. What? So what? Um, can you create more than three VMs at a time? One got stuck at schedule status. And... No, that doesn't have anything to do with migration. Uh, can you go up to the top? a little bit mm -hmm. let's see what they said here during the cdi importer pod screen there's no error that occurs just sounds like that this thought image doesn't oh i wonder if this this wasn't a hot plug volume, was it? No, I don't think it is. Let's see. We'll be in the status. If it is, let's go to the yeah, status. Yeah, we'll be in the status. A little bit further down. No, it's not hot plugged. Um, this must be an old version because we don't even have the volume status. Or are we looking at the VM object rather than the? Yeah, no, this is the VM. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's forty three, I think, right? Yeah. 
Should we tell him now? Can you go down again to the bottom of the ticket? There should be the version which she's using. Okay. Do you see it up in here anywhere? Nope. He doesn't. Oh, no, no version. Nope. Uh, assign this to me. I'll take a look. Thanks, David. And set, we're at 7.55. You want to try one more? Sure. Okay. Well, there's a an empty phase is possible when a VMI is first posted. So that would we would probably have to add a placeholder phase if we don't know if there if it's empty. Okay, so maybe we should do that at uh, mutation, like when the mutation webhook when it send the defaults. Maybe it should set a default phase to like. Just whatever the first one. Is. There's like an un um, undefined or whatever. Uh, yeah, exactly. I should have said that. Yeah, we we could even do it on the metric level, like in the Prometheus metric. Oh, I see. You're right, and that callback. Um, sure. Hmm. It might already be fixed. That's a pretty old version. It's thirty-five. Uh, is this something? This is Nvidia. Can yeah. they fix this? They're pretty active. <laughs> We don't have Ryan today. Ask Ryan uh, if this is something that is like, um, is this something you all um, are going to contribute a fix to? Is this something you all are interested in? in um, how to say that nicely? <laughs> <laughs> Backboarding. <laughs> this is this something you want to handle? I don't know. Yes, exactly. That's what I would say. And I would let them, or I, it's not up to me, our policy allows them to backport something to 0 0.35 right now, even though that's kind of crazy. Yeah, that's what, what's the release now? 44? Uh, I think maybe 45. I'm not sure. That, that is a lot of backporting. Along well, with all the there's no, um, and... yeah, there's no policy that it has to go back to every single one of those releases either. Either it's kind of a strange policy right now. Does this look like a good? Uh, a good well, ask them if um, I'm not so much concerned about that. I guess ask them if this is something they're interested in uh, fixing or handling. Is this something you all can handle? Uh, good enough. It at least gets his attention. But this is we're asking them to take a closer look. All right, five bugs. That's pretty good. Seven fifty-seven. Um, I think we'll call it a meeting. I'll give you guys, give you all three, three minutes to uh, relax and move on to your next meetings. Move on to your day. Thank you for That's attending. That's great. And um, see you all next week.
Take care, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.